This is especially an instant gram today because the buzzer just sounded a couple of minutes ago, maybe not even that. NC State is going to the final four. And in order to get there, they won nine straight games, beating North Carolina for an ACC tournament championship, and now beating Duke in the Elite Eight advancing to Phoenix. Hard to even come up with words. Will Dalton here as well. WD, <laughs> honestly, uh. honestly, I feel inadequate right now because the run was already crazy before they beat North Carolina in the championship game. And then after that, and the manner in which they beat Oakland with – Diara and Middlebrooks fouling out of that game, and let alone now playing Duke and beating the second seed in that bracket in Marquette, I truly feel like I'm out of adjectives. I truly <laughs> feel like we've overshot it here where I don't know. I truly feel like Ricky Bobby in Talladega Nights. Please tell me you've seen that movie. Of course. I don't know what to do with what my hands. What do we hands. do with our hands? <laughs> I don't know. DJ Burns, 29 points. Terrence Oglesby of the Field of 68 is tweeting out, lifetime contract for Kevin Keats when three weeks ago we were talking about the guy being fired. This is the greatest run we've seen an ACC team ever go on. We've never seen anything like this. When State won it in 1983, the bracket had not expanded to 64. So, and that State team was ranked in the preseason, did not have to win five games in the ACC tournament in order to win that. The only other team, by the way, to have won five games was Kimball Walker to win a conference mm -hmm. championship in college basketball history. And a lot of people laughed when I brought that up. On the floor, in my recap, when NC State beat North Carolina, a lot of people laugh. Oh, why even bring up the Kimba team? Who on this team's like Kimba Walker? State's not a national title contender. Who's laughing now? I'll tell you who isn't. Jim Beheim. Oh, NC State, they've never won anything that first night. Kevin Keats better send a bottle of wine or whiskey or whatever he prefers to his house. and. Have him sip on that because, goodness, that's when this all started. Kevin Keats, the joke can be he deserves a lifetime contract now. But in reality, for all these achievements, all these milestones that he's hit, just in the last year and a half, he's added five years onto his contract. Like for getting to the Sweet 16, for getting winning an ACC championship. Uh, it. I'll just go back to what Kevin Keats said in his introductory press conference when he tried to tell us back in 2017, Kevin Keats is a winner. And Kevin Keats just won going to the Final Four on the same day the women's basketball team went to the Final Four, first time they've been to the Final Four since K. Yao, 1998, over a quarter century ago. So really... It's been broken. The curse has been broken. But all of that feels unoriginal. Let's get into the basketball game we just watched. Duke missed a giant opportunity in the first half of this game. I've got the stats in front of me here, so that's what I'm looking at to my left here. NC State shot 27% in the first half. DJ Burns picked up his second foul. Diara had three in the first half, and you're probably thinking with six, seven minutes left to go in the first, you're not going to see DJ Burns again. Actually, it was close to the 10-minute mark that Burns picked up his second foul. Duke needed to add on the lead. Duke needed to pad it. Jared McCain was on in a way he wasn't in the ACC tournament matchup with State. Remember, in pregame warm-ups of that game in D.C., he collided with a teammate, hit an elbow, and had stitches on his eye. John Shire, after the game, said he wasn't himself. Well, he was every bit himself today. He was the only guy keeping Duke in it. But these numbers are just staggering. 
5 of 20 from three-point range in this game. And that's with Jared McCain hitting two threes in the final two and a half minutes of it. So really just abysmal. Anybody other than Jared McCain could not hit a jump shot. And when you get into the second half of this game, Kyle Phillips, DJ Burns picked up his third before Filipowski picked up his. Mo Diara picked up his fourth before Kyle Filipowski picked up his third. So when you just looked at look at opportunities missed, Duke had Burns and Diara in foul trouble. State shot 27% and a half, and you're shooting just slightly a tick above that and only leading by six at the break. It was in that moment that I thought, oh, State has a real opportunity here. But nobody in their right mind thought that when State scores 23, no, make it 21 points in the first half, that State in the second half of this game was going to score 55. Think about what I just said here. Like, there have been a lot of crazy things that have happened with State that might allow for small details to be lost with the history and 83 and all these things. NC State, in an Elite Eight game against Duke, who so far through the first three games they played, only allowed just slightly more than 50 points per game. NC State scored 55 and a half. And DJ Horn started to get involved too. Sure, DJ Horn had to. It couldn't just be DJ Burns, but Burns... To quote my buddy Rob Baxley, nearly went for a 30-piece McNugget. Got, what did he finish with? 29 points in the game? He had, yeah, 13 of 19 shooting, 29 points, four rebounds. Duke had every opportunity to win this game. But when State started to play the way that they had in the previous eight games after their slow start, Duke you could see was starting to play tight. Duke felt like it was in the Elite Eight. Duke felt like, oh no, a couple of years after losing to North Carolina in the Final Four, the first time we ever played them in the NCAA tournament, we're really about to lose to those guys the first time we've ever played them in the tourney. This is the 257th matchup between NC State and Duke. You want to go through the history? Everybody talked about the history post-Valvano or during Valvano, maybe even... Some people go back to Norm Sloan with the title in the 70s, but there's that fun News and Observer factoid that Everett Case wanted to be buried in a cemetery that over on a hill that overlooked US 70 towards Durham so he could wave at his guys hmm. as they go to face, on, face off Duke. It was NC State and Duke that was the rivalry in the early days of the ACC before Dean really got it going at Carolina. It was... Bucky Waters and Vic Bubis being pulled from Everett Case and State, the godfather of the ACC. So really cool to see these teams meeting in the Elite Eight. And what really strikes me as somebody who loves college basketball in this state but doesn't really have a team, I always have to remind myself how many people hate Duke. I don't hate Duke. My dad's a state fan. I grew up outside of Raleigh. I went to East Carolina. My brother went to North Carolina. So my first college experiences were going to campus, hanging out with him. And those are fun. And uh, my dad was a Duke police officer once upon a time. So I got to see Cameron that way. And of course, I live in Winston-Salem where Willow the dog is barking downstairs. But I, I have ties to all of it. And what makes me so excited and what really fills me up is the fact that NC State has their guy with Kevin Keats now. This buys him certainly a lot of time. State fans no longer have to go back to the 80s. I'm also a Baltimore Orioles fan, right? I understand that fans, when they talk about good things that happen for their team, they're citing the 70s and the 80s with greatness. And I can relate to State fans in that way, where all the good things that people talk about with the history of that program, it's pre-Coach K ever winning a national title. Now. They don't have to constantly bring David Thompson to games or Derek Wittenberg or whatever to say, hey, this is a legend. This is a legend that did something that everybody across the country recognizes. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, when they bring DJ Burns to games, mm-hmm. it, they, they've got that guy 
And DJ Horn's a Raleigh native. They've got that guy too. And rivalry dynamics, nationally, I feel like people get what the Duke Carolina rivalry is all about. I don't know if nationally people understand NC State, if people get it, because there are far more NC State fans that live around here than there are Duke fans. I mean, you can attest to that. How many Absolutely. More Duke- and I'm a Carolina fan, and I've said it before, I think some of the best – because we go to all these different you know, venues for football, basketball. Even as a Carolina fan, I think the NC State football games are some of the best environments I go to, and NC State basketball games too, and PNC. Yeah. WD, good to see you in an even size this. square. Appreciate you uh, yeah. offering your input here. I still got a few more things I want to get off my chest, though. I, the thing I'm really getting at is that NC State being good and having the dynamics of – Carolina fans no longer saying to them, you haven't won anything ever. Duke fans having that over them too. Oh, you're not really our rival because you've never beaten us in anything. Well, now they have the ACC championship. Like states, just think about it. They're going to hang a banner for this. This banner, regardless of what happens now, they're going to hang multiple banners. ACC tournament title. Final Four, and when that happens, I want to be there. I want to be there at PNC Arena to see it because I've been at PNC Arena my entire life and never had an opportunity. Uh, Those banners, (laughs) back when it was RBC Center, those banners have collected dust, man. And I've seen those same same banners hanging up there my entire life. So to see some new banners up there with NC State logos on it, that's going to be cool. But it's going to make rivalry dynamics in the state a lot stronger. So mm-hmm. that's the triangle stuff. But with Wake Forest, too, they didn't win 20 games once in the 2010s. 2017, when they went to the tournament last with John Collins, they won 19 games. Steve Forbes has done that two of the last three years. Everybody in the state, state, Carolina, Duke, Wake, feels good about who they have as their coach. Now, there's going to be some dumb people that question Hubert, and some say, well, since Shire's lost the state now, you better win with Cooper Flagg, and there's going to be dumb discourse when it comes to that. But largely, all four schools in our state feel pretty good. John Shire won an ACC championship last year in Greensboro, took a team to the Elite Eight this year after not getting out of the first weekend his first year. Did so as a four seed, beat a number one seed. That's no small achievement. North Carolina went from missing the tournament a year ago to winning the ACC regular season. Hubert won ACC Coach of the Year, and for good reason. Wake, I just mentioned what they've done the last couple of years. Now they need to get to the tournament. It's tournament or bust. And State is riding a cloud, man. You win the ACC championship in D.C. Now you, you're going to the Final Four. Like The last time dynamics felt this good in the state, you probably have to go back 20 years with uh, Herb Sendak, Kay, and Roy. Roy just getting started and Skip Prosser mm-hmm. at Wake Forest. But even then, Herb had one or two more years left at that point when state just kind of had it, and Herb kind of had it with state as well. So even in go back, you might have to go back 30 years. Ooh, the little switcheroo. That's funny how that happens. Uh, see, this is live action, Tracy, on live this Instagram. Action, Tracy. Uh, yeah, that would be great if Kevin Keats would have oh, dropped that to Tracy. Four, so Tra- live action, that. Tracy. Uh, and, you know, we have – but to go back to my uh, train of thought, like you might have to go back 30 years ago when it's Les Robinson and Dave Odom, Kay, and Dean. Like That's the last time that we've had those four coaches remain in place – Coaches at those four schools remain in place for five plus years and are uninterrupted. And that might be what we're looking at here with Forbes, Shire, Hubert, and with Keats. That that's an exciting deal. And it's great for dynamics here locally that everybody kind of has reason to feel pretty good right now. Not to make it all kumbaya, because again, Duke just lost to NC State. They're not feeling great. It, North Carolina's pissed off that they just had to watch State play Duke in an Elite Eight game, which I imagine was a a painful experience for them. And Wake missed the tournament watching a team that they beat and almost beat twice go to the (laughs) Final Four while they didn't make it at all. See, I'm tempted to do the double middle fingers, (laughs) but I'm not. 
It's Easter. I work right. for the Truth Network. Not, I'm not going to do that. Happy Easter, everybody. Yeah. So now we got a Final Four matchup to talk about with NC State and Purdue, Zach Eady against DJ Burns. That's like 600 pounds of mass, maybe 700 pounds of mass going to be banging inside. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be such a story all week. And when you look at the seeds, you have two ones, UConn and Purdue. You have a couple – you have a four seed in Alabama and an 11 seed in NC State. This tournament always delivers. And I think those those seed lines and those stories really do represent that. Here's a stat, though, for somebody on the way out, for all you guys on the way out when speaking to the power of the state of North Carolina. This is the eighth Final Four in the last 16 tournaments that has featured at least one North Carolina team getting that far. And anytime I bring up stats like that, there's always people that would reply with, Pull up, Josh! It's actually, you should just, you shouldn't say the whole state. It's just Duke and Carolina you're talking about. Not anymore. Is it? <laughs> Not anymore. NC State get it, giving North Carolina, it, the state of North Carolina, its eighth Final Four team in the last 16 tournaments. And when you look how the state of North Carolina has done in those tournaments, Carolina wins in 09. Duke wins in 2010. Duke wins in 2015. Carolina wins in 2017. Four of the first seven appearances, they won national championships, more than half of them. So at this point, if you haven't already learned the lesson already, don't count out the pack. Why not them? NC State to the final four. 76-64 76-64 against Duke. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Liking helps with algorithmic stuff. Yeah, click and, the bell. Yeah, click but bell. like like the video too. <laughs> subscribe, comment, do all that stuff. That helps us. We'll be back tomorrow, 3 to 6 p.m. to recap what's been a crazy, crazy NC State run and certainly something we'll be talking about all week. We hope to see you on the drive.